We're getting ready to get our seedlings started and I just wanted to share some little things that I found around our house that is gonna help us save some money getting this going. starting seedlings is far cheaper than buying seedlings at a nursery, there's still a good bit of cost involved with it. So to go ahead and help alleviate some of that, I want to recommend some things that you can use from around your house as perfectly good substitutes for some of the steps in this process. So I've got a bunch of different stuff here. <laughs> one thing that we do, this is also no particular order, but one thing that we do is we have this little canister and every time that something comes into our house that has a uh, you know, a bread tie, a rubber band, anything like that, we keep them in here. So we're gonna use these ties to help stabilize plants, things like that. We also have used the rubber bands to separate our seeds with. So we know which ones are which with the rubber bands. And that is super helpful, <laughs> super easy, and free. I promise you, if you start collecting them, it will be amazing how many things you notice come in with them and your jar will fill up just like ours has. A couple other things. These seem to be like the number one seed storage container I keep seeing on Instagram and YouTube and everything else. It's a picture storage container. I had these. I used to be an avid scrapbooker. I take tons of pictures and I had these. I had five different boxes of them. So through those, I was able to condense down a little bit and I freed up a box so that we will have these for seed storage. Don't go out and buy stuff if you have something else that might work. Maybe you just have a shoebox, a plastic shoebox, and you could line up your seeds in that using rubber bands. There's tons and tons and tons of options. Just because this is the option going around on Instagram doesn't mean that's the option that's going to work best for you or that it's what you need. So find a system that works for you. Scissors. I just, I could not believe the amount of times in the last couple days I've needed some scissors. So make sure that you have a pair handy. This would be one thing that if you don't have one that you can kind of designate to seedlings, I would maybe grab another pair. You can get them pretty cheap, but they've made a world of difference for us. <laughs> one reason is this guy. So we have been collecting our paper towel tubes, toilet tissue tubes, all kinds of stuff for months. So we found that the paper towel ones you could cut into fourths and then box fold the bottoms and then toilet paper tubes we just did box full the bottoms. So these are a little bit taller. We can use these for things that have a little bit deeper roots. And then we can use these guys for other stuff. But scissors came in very handy for this. For you guys, this was going to go either into compost or recycling. So this way, I can just jump start it by putting our seeds in it. Cinnamon! <laughs> I recently heard that you can use cinnamon to help ward off fungus gnats. So you just sprinkle it across the top of your seedlings. I bet you've got some cinnamon in the cupboard, right? Probably. Small containers. Just because your Tupperware doesn't have the same number of lids as you do bottoms, doesn't mean you have to throw them away. You could repurpose them into seedling containers or into drip trays for something else that you're making for seedlings, like this guy. So this is a basil thing that I started here. It came in a little kit. I can link that below. I've got a video on the growing this guy. So. It came with just the pot and the dirt and the seeds. I used a solo cup and I used this container to greenhouse and drip tray it. So it's ready to go. It's perfectly set up for my grow room. <laughs> Speaking of cups, these can have so many uses. You can use these to start seedlings. You can use them to greenhouse stuff. You can use them to scoop your dirt, all kinds of stuff. So if you've got these laying around, make sure to use them. We don't use plastic cups really in our house. Maybe sometimes in the summer if we're drinking something that's kind of sticky, we don't want ants, stuff like that, having barbecue. But generally, no. I bought this sleeve ex like specifically to greenhouse some of the pots that I have. So that was a cost, but you might have some laying around that you could use. Seeds. <laughs> this one kind of blew my mind when I realized last fall that I could start harvesting seeds from things that we already had. 
So these are pie pumpkin seeds because we were processing pumpkins. Some of the stuff that you get in the grocery store, the seeds are not going to reproduce, but you can still try anyway, right? I also have some that I harvested from the yard. Um, we have broom corn or sorghum that grows up along the side of the house that I'm pretty sure the birds have planted because it's right next to uh, one of their feeders. So I harvested the seeds from that so that we could grow it ourselves for funsies. <laughs> Um, dandelions, I've got some tall grasses, stuff like that that we can just grow from seeds that I harvested in the yard. So don't forget to, you know, harvest those seeds that you've got right around. All right, a couple of the last things here. Egg, like, containers. This is a plastic one. It's not my favorite. Came from Costco. It was the cheapest way that we could get organic eggs right then. So this is what we got. But... I was thinking about it, and if I poke a little hole in each one of these little wells, boom, greenhouse, <laughs> and then you just have to find a drip tray for it. So one thing that it fits perfectly in are these cake pans, which you might have laying around. These actually, they are brand new, but I bought them on clearance years ago and I've never used them. So I'm super excited to have this to use them for. Also, you can put these little guys in there. These ones might be a better fit to line them up so you've got a drip tray with a greenhouse lid. Tons and tons and tons of options. Um, one thing that we're gonna be doing is, pardon the noise, using these under bed storage containers and some large things that we've just kind of had kicking around the house for drip trays and stuff like that while our plants are growing. So, and this boot tray, which has been invaluable in this room because this is holy. So, this is also in line with using some stuff that you maybe already have on hand. Again, one of these cake pans with a lid and just an egg crate. If you had just two dozen, it would actually work really well because there is an additional space here. But I have this dozen and a half one. I just poked some holes through the bottom with a pencil. And I can go ahead, I can fill this with dirt. And then once they've started sprouting, you can actually just cut this apart with scissors and plant them as is. So. This might be something that you have around that you're able to reuse this way. I've got a little bit of a sad update here. I So we use these paper tubes and they've got some kind of awful, I guess infection or so, I don't know what you want to call it. Infestation, I suppose. It's either fungus or mold. I'm not completely sure, but it's pretty bad. And it is, sorry, I'm doing this with, you know, the phone in my hand, but it's, it's pretty bad. And I was trying to reason with myself, like, oh, we'll just push through it. They'll be in the ground. It'll be like, it won't even be a problem. So I got this one watered this morning, opened this one, started coughing and sneezing and <clears throat> decided it wasn't worth it because... Yeah, I don't want to deal with that. If it is, I don't want to be releasing spores into our house. And I don't want to be, you know, infecting the rest of our seedlings. So, unfortunately, with a heavy heart, I'm going to be taking all of these ones in the paper tubes out to compost this morning. I lucked out enough. I found some of these while I was cleaning. I had been saving them since we moved in because we knew we wanted chickens in the future. So, I'm just going to go ahead and repurpose those and restart these guys. I'm I'm sad about it, but also I'm just glad to get it over with now before there's growth. I would be so much more sad if it looked like this and I was taking it out to the compost because it was covered in fungus. So anyway, that is an update on that. Um, so I probably wouldn't recommend the paper tubes. I guess go ahead and either send them to the compost or to recycling unless you have better luck with it. I'm not sure, you know, we live in a really old house we already have problems with mold, but the other stuff isn't molding, so I don't know if that's the culprit or if it's just something about these paper tubes. There are a couple different brands because we have been, we've literally been saving them for months, so I don't, I don't know. I wish I had more light to shed on this, but that is the real life outcome of us using those, so we won't be doing that again. But those are just some things I found around my house that are going to help me save a buck in this process. What kind of stuff have you repurposed? I'd love to know. 
Make sure that you like and subscribe, and we'll see you next time.